2&U is really a unique development. I think one of the things we felt early on is that this was one of the best sites available still left in the city of Seattle. We're right adjacent to two major cultural institutions with Seattle Art Museum and Benaroya Hall. Additionally, we're about two blocks from the waterfront, two blocks from the famous Pike Place Market, immediately adjacent to the Central Business District. And so we really felt a significant responsibility to do something really special here. You know, our vision was, could we create a space where neighborhood could happen in such an urban environment? And so we went with that vision to our architect and they came up with this idea of lifting the tower. So 2NU is uh, roughly a 700,000 square foot office of building um, in the heart of downtown Seattle. We've lifted the building up 85 feet um, above the ground floor and created a retail and uh, arts and cultural village down below. Um, and why that's important is our customers, our tenants are absolutely focused on attracting the best and the brightest. And so we really focused on trying to create an experience that our tenants really want, an experience the local community wants, and an experience the city wants. We really look to think about what it meant to be a part of the Northwest. And, and one of the representative images, one is a forest here in Seattle, and this idea of lifting the tower. So we have these massive columns that are sculptural, like almost like tree trunks, that push the building up into the air. And they are massive, and you know they're really designed for you to be near and touch. The bases are really at a level that as the pedestrian, as a building occupant, as a neighbor, you experience those columns. If you're there and you're walking through, you're going to experience something that you've never experienced before. Right now, we've done all of our demo, uh, shoring, excavation, poured all of our garage slabs, um, have our core up to level 16, our low-rise core that's up to level 7, and we've started what we call our second foundation, which is our composite columns, and we will have 20 that will end up being erected. The columns have come a long ways from the original concept sketch um, to create such uh, a structural element in a seismic zone required a lot of engineering and thought behind it. We looked at a number of, of possibilities, including forming them on site, and uh, in the end it made more sense to build them off-site and truck them in as mostly completed projects. The columns themselves are essentially a long steel tube that is then um, fabricated with end caps wrapped in a rebar cage and then taken to the precaster where it's put into this massive tapered hexagonal steel form where precast concrete is poured around the exterior of the steel column. After that, that precast concrete has been cured and sandblasted, ready for shipment, it comes down to the site and then gets lifted into place, bolted and welded, tidying up at the top, and then pumped full of concrete on site. So the whole thing becomes a massive composite piece. When you look at the planning for this, the big picture plan is put together. We know that we have these precast columns. We know that we end up having large 550 ton cranes that are picking up the columns. So that's kind of the easy part. The next part ends up being getting into the detail and working through each intricate step to be able to set the columns. The columns range in weight from 70,000 pounds to 170,000 pounds each. Moving the columns uh, of such substantial weight from Canada down to Seattle was quite an undertaking. The majority of the columns came by truck. Uh, eight of the columns were actually too heavy to travel over some of the highways, so they ended up being barged down uh, through our waterways uh, and then trucked up to the site from there. So we've been planning this 10 day period here for about a year and a half. We have 20 composite columns and then we have a W column which is a steel tube and then it gets clad in concrete rather than the concrete being part of the structural. The composite columns are set on what we've been calling a Y base which is a steel uh, assembly. Uh, that sits on top of our concrete columns which run right the way down to the foundation. Typical day of the Y columns is it's a 2 a.m. start of delivery. All trucks and trailers that are associated with that piece of the project have to be out of the city by 5.30 a.m. so that the buses can start running and the morning commute can not be impacted by it. So when they get here, we get them offloaded, everything quiets down for a couple hours, and we come back in with the erection gang at uh, 7 o'clock and start our day.
most of the columns are two columns that are going up per day, so basically it's a Y, one each side of them, and then being able to tie them together and then tie them back to the core. So what the public's gonna see next is they're going to see a, a 38 story high rise tower go into place in what's gonna seem like overnight. So they'll erect the steel above these lift columns. It starts at level seven. They'll erect that steel two levels at a time and they'll make a circle around this building every week and a half. It's not every day you see these massive elements rising up above the city and it really just raises a lot of interest and excitement about what's this going to be? This is like a Modern Marvels kind of engineering moment to pull this off and make it happen. This is a once in a lifetime sort of opportunity.